Hey guys, hope you're doing well and great. All right, welcome back to the cartons for today. Today we are going to be talking about something that you have to really understand what's going in the market, right? There is opportunity for anyone and everyone if you are willing to take part in the entrepreneurship journey. And this is something that I would like you to keep in your mind that there is not only a hope, there is a way to get it done right so but the only thing what you have to understand is that where is the opportunity right so i'm going to be talking about today's topic right so i have jolted down i've got some notes here with me so i'm going to uh, share you with the notes that i have here just to make sure that i don't go off the track right so for today content would be generation well transfer right it's about the time to transfer wealth so this is a very short period of time i would say about 10 to 15 years if you do not take part in this period of time then probably there's going to be kind of a big challenges after a decade or so the reason why we will talk about that now so in this content we have uh, four uh, little topics that i would like to share with you the first one is to understand what is a generation wealth transfer now generation wealth transfer is about uh, people who's been a boom, uh, baby boomer, all right. Uh, people who were born in the late 50s, 60, 60s, or say prior to the 50s, they want to retire from the business, right? But the problem with the market, or say in this uh, the demographic, is itself is that people from that generation they don't want to take over the business anymore. So that also means that person who owns that business they are looking for somebody who is interested or who is willing to take part uh, in their business or maybe buy share partners operate manage a lot of things right so these guys who wants to retire they do not have anyone else to operate the business anymore so the wealth is already built right by them in but somebody has to be there so that they can transfer those wealth to the next person uh, chances are that uh, their their family or their generation wants to operate the business take over the business but half of them or say more than half of them do not want to be in that business and they want to get rid of that business but they are looking for someone like you who would like to take over their business right and also uh, it's not about you do not have to have a lot of money, but the only thing is that do you have the skills, the knowledge, the passions to take over their wealth, which means that you're going to be uh, kind of partners or you can also buy it out if you have a sufficient amount of investment capital with you. If not with your experience, knowledge and all those things, you can always come up with the partnership and take over those business so that you can get all those wealth transferred to you right so this is a very very good time to uh, take part in this opportunity and that is what i would like you guys to understand that it's not the old guy or the previous guy is operating and it, they are going to operate for many many other years but the thing is that for example if you are focusing on something like for example what does a man can do like physical labor work for example uh, if you talk about the real estate business right uh, a person can work in a real estate business until as long as they can understand read write and use a pen and talk right there is no much physical work so in the real estate industry probably they may not be that much of opportunity but in the food industry there are a lot of opportunity in the food industry the reason why because they are old right they want to retire there they want to get rid of it. it's not about that they don't like the business right but they want some responsible person like them who will be able to operate the business they want to see their once they retire the business is growing the business is expanding the business is creating a lot of uh what do you call it uh expansions network and growth and that makes them happy at the end that's what they are looking for somebody uh who can operate the business like them right so that is a wealth transfer right and the second one is what are the opportunity in the food industry right 
So there's a lot of opportunity in this food industry. For example, let's say uh, there are mom and pop shops, brick and mortar, uh, you know, uh, uh, shops. Uh, they have been operating like recently. What happened was uh, there's a couple who wants to retire from their restaurant business, right? They want to sell this business to me. The reason why is because they're, like I say, it's uh, their generations do not want to operate in the food industry anymore. And so they want to do something else, which is out of the food industry business, right? But their parents want, or their parents have been doing that business for more than 10, 15 years. Now, as they want to retire, they just don't want to sell it. They can sell it and make the money out of it and get it out. But there are some people who want to keep that business, same name or same location, but at the same time, they want to have the kind of feeling uh, that it's still their identity. They're kind of a, a you know, a, that flashback them, their they're kind of a lifestyle, basically. So that is something these guys were looking for. So, uh, it, like I said, if it's in the food industry, there's a lot of opportunity. Now, uh, talking about the brick and mortar, right? Uh, I also discussed about actually uh, a lot of about opportunity in virtual kitchen business because virtual kitchen business is just a kind of a little, very independent. It does not take a lot of money to start the business. That is why I also focus on bring, building your brand before you invest a lot of amount in uh, starting a food business. The reason why, because uh, for example, this restaurants, right? They need 10, 15 staff. So a business owner to operate a food business, they need at least minimum to minimum three or four staff, right? So uh, do you want to do that? Do you have that sufficient amount of uh, capital or an amount of, you know, that you can save it up for the next one year or probably for the next six months? If you may have it, that's good for you. If you don't, then probably you may be thinking about, well, I don't have the money, will I fit in? Of course you can, you will You will fit in as long as you have the passion to be in that food industry or you of that particular food, right? So uh, what are the other, what are the kind of a product that you can bring in uh, and start uh, using, uh, what do you call it, your experience, your knowledge and all skill sets uh, to start a business? The first thing is that uh, you have to think about it. What is the business that you can do? And what, are you, what, are you, what do you love to do, right? So uh, here's that something that I wanna kind of share with you. Uh, small business, uh, when you want to start, right? Your own business. Remember this, first few months, it will be one man show, right? A single man army right that means that you are going to be in a battle alone and whether you win or lose that doesn't matter but you will have the experience to be in the battle when i say battle it's about the business you will learn uh, about sales marketing customer product all those things right that is something you will have to have uh, already in you so if you have no experience there is no excuse. The only thing that I would suggest you to do it before you invest, try to work somewhere at a burger uh, a shop or pizza shop or any coffee stores or anywhere, right? Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts or, or anything like that, that you will understand the environment of the business itself. So when you have that experience, I'm not asking to spend 10 months because if you are working in a busy store, probably uh, you may learn a lot of things within six months. Now here's one of the things that I tell many people that once you are into a new business or once you are employed as uh, uh, one of the staff for a uh, you know, small scale business, basically like coffee stores or, or, or grocery stores or small restaurants or uh, you know, uh, a juice bar or something like that, right? never ever work there for the money or for the paycheck but work there to learn the system learn the system and ask as much as questions from the owner of or the manager of that business what happened here is that you are going to get a free free knowledge poured into your 
soul or into your mind and then that is something that you can save a lot of time uh, when you have to operate your own business say for example uh, I do not know anything about choose you right so what I did was I quit from my corporate job and that is back almost like 15 years ago right and then I kind of moved into that uh, sushi business and I didn't take a salary for the first six months the reason was because the manager or the owner of that business was good enough he was helping me out with food housing transportation so the only thing that my focus was uh, down the line in future what can I learn from this business right my focus was on the product how to get the suppliers where the suppliers are, uh, suppliers are where is the opportunity where i mean to say like where are my buyers right where are my product buyers who like my pro, uh, product and who like this kind of a product so all this research i have my little notes that i bought it from uh, a dollar notebook from uh dollar tree i bought a bunch of pens as well i i, I kind of write every day right where this particular product that i have it right where will are where are my buyers and where are my suppliers and where is my market i do all this kind of research and after six months i've started my own sushi business right and so that was something that i was passionate with right you got us there's going to be a sacrifice but here's a good thing if you are getting paid by somebody but also to learn from them it's a very good way for example um, i was listening to uh, to the video uh, to the interview with uh, uh, the Papa John's owner or the guy who started the founder right so he, what he was saying was that he has a very good experience in the business the reason is because uh, he was like a cockroach right he does research as much as he can so he goes and try uh, work in a different industry the burger industry so it's a sandwich industry pizza industries and then something he thought about why not i should try with the pizza but the pizza was not that good quality so what he did was he worked for someone else right learn how to get make the best dough for pizza and also at the same time he also learned uh, that what is the best ingredients that he can bring into his product which is about the, the sauce and also at the same time he learned about the, what is the amount of the the, the proteins that you're going to add it on to the pizzas and the type of the cheese that you have to add on the pizza so he learned he spent time right that's how he got the perfection to his product so that is something that you can also do it that is the reason there is a lot of opportunity in this industry the only thing that you have to do is to be willing to take part and learn so let's say you have 20,000 you want to finish your associates degree diploma something like that right but well, do you have a guarantee that you're going to be uh, getting the return on investment on that education? Probably yes, probably no, right? But here's the guarantee part is that let's say you have the 10,000, right? Now, you want to keep that money for your business investment when you're going to be starting your uh, building a brand and start from a virtual kitchen business, right? So go and learn that one year or six months try to get the perfect for your own product so instead of going to the college i'm not asking you to not to go to the college go learn things right but if you are an entrepreneur uh, you want to kind of you know know where your uh, amount or money should be invested basically so ten thousand you have it right keep aside do not waste, do not use, even touch it, do not purchase anything at all. But if you have the money with you, start purchasing small equipments, like not necessarily brand new. You can always go for a use equipments or people who are closing their business. Just buy from them, negotiate the price. Sometimes you end up buying for, you know, 1,000 or 500 people uh, where the equipment actually is about like $10,000 in the market, right? So uh, what you do is that... Uh, get into let's say if you want to be in a pizza industry you want to create your own uh, pizza business right get into a piece of pizza industry work in a domino's pizzas or work in a uh, uh, papa john's work in a uh, um, little caesar or you want to just go to pizza hut work in each company right you don't have to tell them just work as a part-time work this into this company let's say for you work morning shift evening shift morning shift evening shift 
part-time you can always switch to four company but the good thing is about that you are going to learn a different kind of a business operations quality skills knowledge and all those things within six months and when you have this knowledge right now this is the time you have to jump into the business because that's what you like to do now as you already have invested six months remember this in this period of time you're still making the money because you're working for them as a part-time or as an employee they're still paying you the money correct so that's a good part you're still making the money at the same time your investment amount for your college is still there right so that is how you're going to be able to sufficiently support your business for the next three or four months and by the time you will understand that should you go um, totally full-time with the business or not right and that's where also at the same time you will be able to start building your own brand right so that's a lot of way to do so uh now uh thinking about talking about uh, the opportunity right so there are business which is in a mid scale large scale and small scale so for you or for us we want to start in a small scale because we don't have the manpower we don't have the um, the capital for to recruit or hire a lot of employee so the best way is to think in this way uh, what would be the product that i should come up with that i can do it myself so pizza you can do it yourself sandwich and subs you can do it yourself burger probably takes time so you don't want to take part in the burger but let's say on sushi you can also do that coffee stores you can do that uh, donut stores you can of course do that and also uh fried chicken you can also do that and um the, um, the 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 asian food you can of course do that if you just need, you just need to have a kind of a good skills for the Asian food because there's a lot of ingredients they usually use it right and, and most of them are like a fresh made and prepared thing so you always have to spend a long time in your site work so that's one of the thing and not only that you can also start your juice bar right and all the, all those things so there are a lot of business that one person can do so when you are coming up with your business model think about it in this way that what can I do it myself like from making the product to uh, fulfilling the products to the customer right if you can do it yourself and it's very easy once you create the system think in this way will the next person who you would employ would want to work with you or people probably may want to work but then uh, if you are looking for an experience, you have to pay higher salary. So uh, my way of thinking would be 16 year olds can do a job, 12 years old can do a job, right? Uh, for example, in US, uh, if you are below 16, you cannot operate a machine, you cannot operate heavy machine basically. And also second thing is that you cannot use any blade or any sharp uh, equipment or tools, something like knife. You cannot use it but if you already do those things prepare those things for your staff how about a guy 14 year olds can do the job how about a guy for six above 16 years can do the job look for something like that because these young ones they need a job they need a part-time job and they go to school they have a, a holidays they have a vacation they can contribute to you right they can learn from you and they are the one if you really really take care of them well they will be the one who's going to be staying with you for a long long time because as you expand your business they're going to be with you because what what what, what will be the end the end right are they going to be working somewhere else no are they looking for something else a better opportunity in their life probably they might right but as long as you support them they will stay so look for something that a product that can be done by someone who is above 16 year 16 year old right so coffee coffee stores uh, pizzas subs sushi uh, well i would not say sushi because you really have to have a really sharp knife but then pizzas is there you got a uh, uh, sandwiches is there the juice bar is there the coffee bar is there right there's a lot of other things that a 16 year old can do so keep in mind that right so let's move to this uh, third one uh, 
who all should take advantage of this opportunity which means like who all should take advantage of this opportunity when it says the opportunity is about the 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 generational wealth transfer right so who should take the opportunity well everyone should take the opportunity i have a quick note here i'm going to read out for you so in my personal experience anyone who is interested and is passionate to start their entrepreneurship journey right uh, they should take part in this but remember that you have you do not have to have a physical fit body but you have to have a mental fit you know morals because in food industry or any business there's a lot of up and down first what if your family doesn't support second what if your friends does not support third what if you are too young that you do not have the financial support from anyone else right so let's say there is no one who supports you but your mind says that you can achieve it because you can think it right if you can think it you can achieve it just uh, what it says uh, Napoleon Hills what Napoleon Hill says is think rich you know, and you'll grow rich that's it so you gotta think beyond the normal people to be in a business right so uh, for me who should take in the this uh, who should take part and who should uh, take part in this opportunity basically I already explained in the second point is that uh, if you are passionate about it then you will want to first learn how the system work you gotta build your own suppliers you gotta build to understand the demographic of your customer and also at the same time you gotta be passionate and talk about your product like recently I was um, watching um, Mr. Beast interview so what he says is what does YouTube want why does he become so famous right the thing is that here's what you have to do nothing is there which is wrong or right correct it's just how you do it so what he was saying was what if you think the banana is good then you gotta hit hard on that that banana is the world best fruit and how healthy it is how easy it is to get and the price of the banana all those things but you gotta only talk about banana and that's how people will be like all right well there's a lot of thousands of other people talking about banana but this specific guy is he knows a lot about banana that means that you gotta promote talks about your product as much as you can right if you have the passion about it if you have the the kind of the excitement every day for that product you should take part in that but to understand that process you have to learn from somewhere you will not be able to learn all these things actually from Google or YouTube you got have to hands on the job right that is what it's needed so when you have your hand on skills you know the skills is in your hand your mind your body you are in the system that's when you will be more comfortable to operate those this business because I've seen people money they just go down people a lot of network still go down people a lot of customer base still go down because they're not passionate about it they just want to make the money quick money just get out right but here's the thing that you are trying to create a legacy of your own uh, system and I'm not asking you to try to compete with other stuff right competing is for losers competition is for losers that's what Peter Thiel says as well right Peter Thiel is the first investor for uh, Facebook so that's what he says right? we, we don't think about competitions right competitors you don't want it you do not want to compete with somebody because you do not know their system you do not know their plans and their strategies what you know about is yourself your business your plans your strategy so focus on what would be the best things that you can do and to know that you gotta be with already or have a past experience from somewhere to learn and understand the system so my suggestions would be people who has experience in food industry should take part and to have a food experience industry you do not have to have more than 10 or whatever 
you just have to understand the system. And to understand the system, like I said uh, just a while ago, when you go to work, don't work there just to for your paycheck. Work there to learn. Here's what's going to happen here is that you have six months. You try to match the knowledge, the experience, the everything, just like the owner or the managers of that business. When you match that skill set, you should get into that business, right? Because you already built up your confidence. You know the system. You know how to get things done, right? So this, uh, for, for, for this kind of people, right? If you are one of those, you should take part in this opportunity. And I can bet you and I can assure you that you will... 100% win the game because you are equipped well before you go to the war, right? So the last point for today is uh, how to get into the food business, right? Or say um, probably uh, what other other industry that you can get into it. So looking looking this way, like I just mentioned earlier, uh, that if you want to get into uh, real estate, people still work in real estate because your mind, their hands still work. They can talk, right? Real estate is not about physical work. It's all about your networks and contacts and all those your past records. So we can work as long as. Now think about as the doctors, right? Can the doctors work uh, till what age? Maybe 50, 60, probably, right? And but then for doctors, you need to have a good skill set, right? To have to match their experience and all those things. So that's a very technical again. So what are the other things? So for example, it could be uh, auto auto repair sh shop that's something that you can do it right but also again uh, auto repair shop is something uh, that's going to take time for you to understand different kind of a product of each vehicles right and that's going to take time so uh, what would be the easiest way to get into right uh, think in this way what is the product that is moving fast in the market, in the grocery stores, in our in the business, what product move fast? What do you use every day? You wake up in the morning. First thing you use is toothpaste, right? Toothbrush. You use every day. Toothbrush probably you change every two months, every one month, or everything's or sometimes maybe a year. I don't know, but just saying, right? What are the things that you consume every day? Water, maybe some sorts of energy drinks. Coffee, tea, food, rice, flour, there's a lot of things that moves and these are all products, right? You can use all, you can fit yourself into one of this product category and set your business so that your products should be something which is moving fast. Uh, they call it FMCG, fast moving consumer goods, right? Focus on those things, right? And so once you know like what other product that are moving fast, the second thing that you have to understand is that uh, the shelf life of the product. So for example, if you prepared a pizza, what is the shelf life? In in US, uh, according to the uh, USDA uh, and FDA requirements or health department requirements, once you have the hot food prepared, right? From the time it's prepared, you can only keep for four hours. Somebody buys it, good. If nobody buys it, you have to discard it. And in terms of sushi, you can only keep, uh, you know, for a certain period of time. No, it's a, if it's with a cook, and if it's less than 41 degree Fahrenheit, then you can keep it. Well, it's fresh about uh, for the next uh, 12 hours, but you can still keep for about uh, 48 hours to 72 hours. That's what you can do. But let's say you like to, you like cookies, right? You like candies, right? Candies you can start yourself. Cookies you can start your own self. It does not require a lot of money. Ice cream, something that you can do with, right? Or, 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 or let's say, what else would be that? Biscuits, right? Uh, Something like that. You prepare it, the shelf life is about three months, six months, right? So think about it. What is the fastest moving products in the market? Are people use it or you use it? And then what would be the product that has a long shelf life so that you don't have to discard 
throw away the product because here's the thing when you throw a lot of product away right so you don't want to discard any product because you are throwing away your profits to the garbage you don't get anything right guys i hope this is kind of a more of a you know summary um but with these points i actually want to share with you that there is opportunity and where is it coming from where will it land and from where from that point where will it go right and the uh, products that you have to pick up are something which is a one-man show product which means like you get the supplies supplies get delivered you prepare it you make it you you do you, you sell it you complete the fulfillment and that can be done by only one person the second thing that you want to focus on is what is the product uh, that are move, moving fast in the market and the third thing also at the same time you want to consider is uh, what product has a long shelf life approved by the government and the health department right guys i hope this content is so useful for you uh, if you really like this content please do feel free to share me your comments your thoughts you know i'm really excited to share it as much as i can but then you guys need to tell me that what you want to kind of uh, learn from my end because i have a lot of experience uh, i also work for a billion dollar uh, food industry so working while I'm making this content for you guys uh, so from my experience in this management you're right I want to kind of cut down a lot of information so that I can give you the key points for you to uh, get into this understanding or to get into the system so that you understand uh, things clearly but at the end I will be able to show you the, the way and what it is at the end you have to walk, take the walk you know you have to do the work it's not going to be easy but then it's not about you will not win the game the winning is for the people who are in the game that you will win if you are saying i'm not gonna win it yes of course you will not because you are not in the game so to win the game you have to be in the game all right guys feel free to share your comments thoughts and suggestions and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe so that i can bring more contents for you and if you do have questions just shoot me an email share me in the comment sections i'll make sure that i'll reply every text of yours until the next video you guys have a good day cheers